Hello FEA CSP, Mr. Graf here, you there. This is a quick video to show you, uh, I say quick, I'm gonna make it as quick as possible. I want to show you uh, lesson 7.0.3. At least I wanna show you level one of that. And here you are, uh, here's the program, here's the code. Feel free to click pause, you can basically copy this. Um, you'll wanna watch this video or at least watch it till the end because there are some corrections that need to be made. So that way you can uh, basically have it draw the, the sprites the way you need it to. So let's go through here. First things first, um, I have an array. So I define two arrays here at the top. One of them I call current sprite. And this array has one index at index position zero. And it just so happens that this array is going to carry or hold the sprites uh, for us, the images. Um, the second array is our data. Now our data, you could call it numbers, you could call it integers, whatever. That's just the name of this array. It is going to contain integer values. This is one of the questions that you have to answer in this lab or in this exercise is how many different sprites can you fit on the screen? Um, and if you experiment with it, uh, you could do, you could start with zero. I like to start with one. So that way the pictogram always has at least one sprite in it, but you could, in theory, you could do zero. A and what you'll find is that like nine or maybe 10 are the maximum that you're going to want to have on the screen. Um, so right here on this one, for example, I'm doing one through nine, but you could, you could in theory do like zero through 10 or, or whatever. Um, so that's it. That's it for the setup, really. That's that's the setup. Then what we do is we go into a for loop. And remember, a for loop is going to iterate. You're, you're going to want it to cycle, like do something and then do it again and then do it again and then do it again. But for a, I, I guess the best way to put it is for a non-predetermined amount. Um, is that, I don't know if that's exactly the best way to say it. Instead, I, I'll say it this way. We want this index, we want this for loop to go as many times as the length of the array, um, uh, as a, sorry, for index from zero to length of array current sprite. And, and so what we, what we have to do is we have to then run this for loop. Um, and so I created a variable here. This is very common. Uh, to create a variable or use a variable named I. Uh, it's lots of different references, but basically you can think of it as like the iteration. So iteration zero, I equals zero. Um, repeat this. So go get that data value, which is going to be a random number, one to nine. So it can be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and get the value at index, okay? So this value at index is gonna be the, the cycle number, okay? So uh, i equals zero, or setting i to zero, that means you're running loop one time, um, or the first time, and then if you complete that and run the loop again, that would be i equals one, which would be the second loop through, and so on and so forth. So um, once we enter this loop, getting this, sorry, getting this data value from here, which is going to be a random number one to nine, we're going to get the value at the index loop, which is right here. Um, we are then going to set my sprite. Okay, so setting my sprite, just like you normally do this up here at the top, but instead we're going to do it inside this repeat loop. And there's a really good reason why. Because the question asks you to create a program that will basically create a pictogram, which is a bunch of different sprites or images printed row after row. And so you're going to want to create that first row, and then you're going to want to jump down and then create the next row. So that's why you're going to want to put this inside of a for loop, and you're going to want to use the current sprite and then get that index value, okay? I'm gonna show you that really quick. Remember, you get your index values from right here. You pull them and drag them like that. Of kind player, actually the kind really doesn't matter. You could do just about any. 
um, because we're not doing anything with collisions or anything in this. Now, um, look at my, I set my sprite position, okay? So by setting my sprite position, again, set my sprite position, uh, setting its Y value. This is really important because the Y value is going to be the spacing across the screen. Um, that is related to the index. Okay. Then setting my sprite X value, that's going to be the up and down position. Um, that is going to be in relation to the I value. Okay. So then changing I by one you are now creating rows. Okay, you won't see the rows. Did I say, I may have flipped that. I apologize if I flip that. Um, basically one of these, you're gonna set up, you're gonna need to set up an X and a Y. Yeah, I think I flipped it. You're, you're controlling your spacing across and your spacing up and down. Let's just see what that looks like. like cause I can show you, cause I have an example right here. Okay, so here it is running my code. If I click refresh, you see now it looks like it drew five, Fresh, uh, is that nine, two, five, three, one. Okay, but it, it looks terrible. It doesn't look like what it needs to. What it needs to do is be nicely spaced. It needs to be fully on the screen, and then it needs to be nicely spaced across, right? Okay, so that's these values, and that's the last thing I'm gonna show you, and then you have to figure out, I'm gonna leave you to figure out the rest. Okay, so these are just kind of like new numbers I threw in there. Um, I'm just going to play with them a little bit. Um, so change that to 10 and oh, okay. That brought it down a little, that brought it down and on the screen. Uh, all right. I like that. Um, let's try changing this one to 10 and let's, and let's see what happens. Oh, okay. So now the top of the, the top of it is not off the screen and the side of it's not off the screen. Let's iterate a, or, Okay, so they're still stacked on each other. All right, so let's go here. The stacking is a result of one of these two. And so it's like, I leave you to incur, I encourage you to try and figure that out. You can even pause the video now if you want and see if you can play with these numbers and, and figure that out. It just so happens that if we adjust this loop, or I'm sorry, this position value, it starts to stretch them out crank through it a couple times. If you notice, they're still like right on top of each other, like really close. In fact, I think they're just sharing a tiny, I think they're just sharing an edge actually, but we want a little bit of a gap. So let, let's, let's literally try and just go to 16 and see how that works. That should, okay, maybe they were overlap, overlapping a little bit more. So let's bump it to 17. So we're just barely kind of like incrementally taking it up. Boom. Now there is black space between them. Okay. Starting to like this more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the ninth one would go right there. All right. Let's see if I can get nine really quick. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Boom. So that's it. Now what you have to do is, I think it's two more things. You have to figure out how to do two more things. One, figure out how to get more rows of stuff to make a pictogram and two, make it so that there is a printout or a readout or a number that says, uh, this is like nine, um, and then like three and then one and then seven, you know, so there's, there's many ways to do that. So I, I leave you to figure out how to do that. Um, I definitely encourage you to explore and experiment again. This is not easy. This is a revisit. So it's as much about doing the work and experimenting and trying as it is getting it right. So don't focus on being perfect. Instead, focus on learning and engaging with the content. And please, 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 as always, ask questions and stay positive out there, coders.